Hello everybody, welcome to the I Am IT Geek YouTube channel. My name is Shabazz Dat and as ever, I am the IT Geek. Uh, welcome back to the uh, Microsoft SC300 exam prep series. Um, bit, I'm going to be a bit emotional, I'm warning everybody, this is a penultimate episode in the series. Um, you know, you noticed for the last few episodes, Dwayne wasn't with me, we had, a, we had a bit of a scheduling conflict. But I'm glad to say that Dwayne is back for the final two episodes. Hi Dwayne. Hey Shabazz. Welcome. How are you? I'm doing good. Glad to, glad to be back together. Uh, yeah, oh, you were busy busy uh, presenting at a at an in person conference, right? And that's why we had, yeah. to, had to do this all all remote all remote and separated. Yes, correct. As of the ABD <laughs> Tech Face had had a blast, but again, I'm I'm glad that we're doing this. To, you know, we it'd be remiss if we didn't do finish off together. You know, the, the, this series. Um, you know, we, we, you put you've you've put so much effort into, it and I really appreciate your time you've given on it. Um, so oh, thank you, you very well. much. Um, I just had to show up. I just had to show up for demos. You did all the slide decks. <laughs> I know, but the demos are the most important. But <laughs> to be fair, I can imagine they're the bits people prefer. That you know, they're sick of hearing me ramble on. They want to see people like seeing like demos and stuff. Um, but yeah, for the for the final two episodes as well, we are we are. I get, I get the pointer right this time. Oh, oh, what is it? There, we're rocking our MVP jerseys. So we thought we'd finish off in uh, in in swag. Some quality swag, so thank you to the MVP community for, for these. Um, yes. Uh, and as I mentioned, we are we are on the penultimate uh, episode, so there's one more episode after this, and we are on the final actual topic. Um, so let's get into the subject matter. So yeah, I'm, called, I'm hoping by now, you know, we're, we're 37 episodes into, hopefully by now you know who me and Duane are. We, we, we introduced ourselves, reintroduced ourselves at the beginning of uh, this module. Um, and this module is module four, so we're at the end of it, last topic. Uh, we're still talking about planning and implementing an identity governance in Azure AD. And we are going to be talking about um, monitoring Azure AD. And this is part one of, of that topic. Um, so we're going to cover designing a strategy for monitoring Azure AD. And then we're going to talk about reviewing and analyzing sign-in, audit, and provisioning logs um, using the Azure AD console. And then we're going to look at configuring diagnostic settings, including log analytics, storage accounts, and event hub. And I will then hand over to Dwayne to, to do a demo around configuring diagnostic settings in Azure AD. So let's talk about designing a strategy for monitoring Azure AD first of all. Um, I also want to take a look at the benefits of using Azure AD reporting first and, and the monitoring aspect. You know, Azure AD reporting provides a comprehensive view uh, and logs of Azure AD activity uh, with, within your environment. And you know, that includes any sign events, includes audit events, and, and you know, any changes to your directory. So you know, every time someone does an MFA your request and signs in, every time anyone makes a, an admin makes a change, um, you know, that sort of stuff is, is all covered. And th the data that you can actually get from the logs and the, the reporting that allows you to again determine how your apps and services are being used so analytics it allows you to detect you know potential problems or, or, or potential risks that are affecting the health of your environment you can troubleshoot issues you know using the, that, that information which is you know preventing some of your users from actually getting work and being productive you can also gain insights by you know seeing those audit events uh, and those those changes to your Azure AD directory. <clears throat> you know, just continuing with the sort of benefits, you know, with with Azure AD monitoring, you can you can root logs as well. You can uh, you, you can root them to like an Azure storage account. You know, for sort of archive. You know, if you want to archive logs, for example, you might need them at a later date. And uh, Azure monitor logs as well, the, you know, the formerly known as as uh, Azure log analytic workspace, I believe it was. And here you can analyze the data, create dashboards and, and alert on specific events as well. So it, again, it allows, allows you to be more proactive within your reporting and monitoring rather than reactive. And finally, you can use, you know, a, you know an Azure event hub where you can integrate with your exist, uh, existing SIAM tool. Uh, and then you know, examples of that like Splunk, um, and, and maybe Q radar or something like that. Uh, so again, a lot, a lot of good benefits to, to monitoring Azure AD. Just wanted to touch on some licensing and prereqs um, that you need to have in place, obviously. 
this has been throughout this topic, you know, Azure AD premium license. You need to have that to access Azure AD sign-in logs. Um, you need to make sure you have the right sort of um, the sort of uh, privileges as well. So to, to deploy an, an AD monitoring and reporting, you'll need to, to have uh, a user account, uh, either global admin or security admin uh, on your Azure AD tenant. Uh, and depending on that sort of file destination of your log data, you, know, you might need one of the following. So, you know, an, an Azure storage account um, that you can you can have like list key permissions for. Um, you know, Microsoft actually recommend that you use a general storage account and not a blob storage account for that. So that could be key for the exam. So make sure you keep that in mind. Um, you know, and also an Azure Event Hub, we mentioned Azure Event Hub namespace. So you can maybe integrate your third party SIAM solutions. And also, you know, you, you require a, a Azure Log Analytics workspace to send those logs to, to Azure Monitor. So again, just some licensing and prerequisite um, items there. Let's just discuss about reviewing and monitoring Azure Active Directory audit logs for a bit. So Azure, Azure AD audit logs provide records um, of system activities and, and that's for compliance, you know, to access the audit report you need to select the audit logs in that monitoring section of azure ad and you know you've got a, you then have like a default list of what you can actually see so an audit log has, it has that default view and that shows you you know things like date and time of the occurrence for example you can see the service that actually logged that occurrence um, the, the category and the name of that activity and also the status of that activity as well. So is it a success or a failure? And finally, you can look at the uh, target um, of that audit log. So let's touch on filtering audit logs. So you can filter the, the, the data, the audit data uh, on the following sort of fields. You can, you can filter it on the service. Or you can filter it on the category. Uh, the activity, you know what they're doing, are they signing in, are they making a change, the, the status of that that um, audit, or again the target, so a bit very similar to the, the sort of um, the, the previous slide. Staying on that subject of filtering um, audit logs, if we talk about the, the service filter, this allows you to select from a like a drop down list of multiple services. Um, yeah, and those can include like access reviews or uh, app proxy service and also hybrid authentication. So, you know, these are just a few of the services you can filter, filter, filter by. We also have that category filter we mentioned. So the category filter enables you to select one of multiple filters, including authentication, uh, device category, or entitlement management as well, just to name a few. Then obviously we mentioned that status um, filter in the last slide as well. So the status filter allows you to, to filter based on the status of an audit operation and, and that status can be, be one of three, which is all success or failure. Final sort of filter I wanted to touch on was the, the date range. So this filter enables you to define a time frame for the return data and, and possible values are, are sort of seven days, 24 hours, or you can be custom if you want anything uh, away from, different from that. So a few more topics I want to talk about before I hand over to Dwayne. One of those is audit log, short, uh, log shortcuts. So in addition to Azure AD, the Azure portal provides you with two sort of additional entry points to, to audit data. One of those is uh, users and groups, and the other one is enterprise applications. So let's just focus on both of these before I hand over to Duane. So the first is user and group audit logs. So with user and group based audit reports, you can get an answer to, to several um, questions. Those include what type of updates have been applied to users? How many passwords were changed? What are the groups that have been added? And finally, have the group owners or have the owners of, of any of the groups been changed? Let's talk about enterprise application audit logs now before I hand over to Dwayne. So with application-based audit reports, you can get answers to, to questions uh, such as what applications have been added or updated recently? Have any applications been removed and what are they? 
Has the service principle for an application changed? Or have the names of any of the applications changed? So that's a bit of an overview of, of some of the, the, the monitoring as your AD and, and some of the topics we, we mentioned. I'm now going to hand over to Dwayne. And it is uh, that, that time you all look forward to admit it. It's demo time. Over to you, Dwayne. All right. Thanks, Shabazz. So, <clears throat> so we're uh, in the Azure Active Directory. So in Azure AD, we're going to be doing all this. Again, uh, as we've kind of done a little bit through the, uh, the last few videos, I've kind of shown uh, we have... Uh, you know, Microsoft Entra and the Entra Admin Center uh, actually does have a nice, uh, nice setup here uh, where everything's uh, very, uh, uh, very well organized uh, in monitoring and health. We have uh, we have all of our logs and log analytics and di uh, diagnostic settings. Same thing within Azure AD. We scroll down into the monitoring area and we have uh, have those. Uh, those sign-in logs, as uh, as Shabazz was mentioning, and the different uh, information that's in there. We have our audit logs and what's been taking place in terms of activity uh, within our environment. Uh, provisioning logs, I uh, don't have anything listed in here. Um, not a real big one to know, just note the three, those three types of logs. Uh, we have our log analytics in here with uh, our ability to run Custo queries. And, uh, and see what's going on within our environment. And uh, the key th thing in here, um, we've also got, uh, I'm gonna skip out of here. Uh, we've got our, uh, our usage and insights in here. Uh, we can see with our different applications, uh, what's taking place and what sign-ins we have on different, uh, uh, different applications. So we can see some different, uh, get some different insights and information there. But the key thing we're showing here is the diagnostic settings and what they are. Uh, you can see I have some diagnostic settings already set up uh, with some log analytics workspaces. One of those is my uh, my Sentinel workspace. Uh, we have, uh, you know, I've created some other, uh, you know, these are all actually Sentinel workspaces I've created in different demos. Uh, so they're all in here and they're all feeding into uh, to uh, Sentinel from Azure Active Directory. So if I was to go to each one of these workspaces uh, within Sentinel, uh, I should show a data connector uh, in uh, Azure Sentinel for Azure Active Directory that is, that is uh, set up in there. But if we want to get our diagnostic settings uh, for these various events and these various sign-in logs, uh, we would select the Add Diagnostic Settings here. And here you can see uh, the different uh, the different categories, uh, you know, our audit logs, sign-in logs are all in here. Our risky users, so all of these, all of these logs and all of this log data, uh, we can then bring into our log analytics workspaces and uh, and bring in to uh, our environment. Now, the way I have it set up right now with those, and you can see we can set that setting up. Um, we can send it to a log analytics workspace. We can send it, archive these to a storage account. We can stream them to an event hub as. Uh, as uh, Shabazz had mentioned, we can, you know, if we're using a third-party SIM, uh, such as Splunk or uh, or Q uh, Q Radar or other, you know, others, we could we could utilize that. Um, the way that I have utilized these diagnostic settings already, as I pointed out, I have it using uh, using Microsoft Sentinel. So Sentinel is already gathering these logs, and that information is already being uh, being put into there. So we don't have to use like things like Event Hub and uh, and uh, and things of that to to stream that to other uh, to other third party solutions. We have it all. It's all integrated within uh, the Microsoft environment. But we can, you know, we can sit here. We can send it to to a workspace. As as you can see here, we can uh, if we want to archive it and uh, set up long-term retention of logs. Uh, we can do that as well, uh, and uh, and we can uh, you know can then maintain those logs into our uh, into a storage account, uh, so that if something happens you know beyond the normal retention settings, we can uh, we don't have to uh, worry about losing that information. We can go back on that, and so once we once we've decided how we're how we're going to do this, and we and we give it a name, we just need to, say, need to save it, and then it would save into our logs. I'm not going to do that within my environment. Like I said, I don't, don't want to add any additional storage costs or anything like that. Keep in mind, and that, that's a point to bring up, is anytime you are, are saving any types of logs, you are ultimately 
uh, ultimately utilizing storage within uh, within Microsoft's environment. You know, uh, typically with you know Azure AD, it's within Microsoft Azure uh, on on a uh, on a storage account. So there is a cost that's going to be involved in that, even though uh, technically, you know, monitoring Azure Monitor and everything is a free service. There's a cost to the logging, uh, and if you archive and maintain those logs. There's going to be a cost to that storage account to to hold on to those. Of course, you could put those into an archival storage or a uh, or a cold storage to save some money off of the uh, the hot tier of storage as well. So that's really uh, really how you configure and set up all of your diagnostic settings so that that all then feeds into your your different monitoring features of sign in logs, auto logs, and also log analytics. So then you can run queries and do some hunting if you have. A, uh, a particular uh, incident uh, that might take place within your Azure Active Directory. So that is it for that quick walk through Shabazz. I'll shoot it back to you. Thank you, Dwayne. Great, great walk through of, uh, of sort of the diagnostic settings in Azure AD. Uh, again, just very relevant to what we've been talking about. Um, so yeah, thank you. And, and that kind of brings us to the end of this episode. Um, a bit of a, again, a, two shorter episodes because it's, it's probably the the less ground we need to really cover with monitoring as your D, there's, there's just not really much to it. Yeah, um, not not a whole not a whole lot. And you you want to know more about monitoring and everything like that? Take the Azure Administrator exam. <laughs> exactly. As far as your D is concerned, this is very you know it's very limited. But again, we're trying to trying to give you as much information as we can. Um, so yeah, again, from a you know you can get all the links to our socials in the description. Please do reach out to us. Um, most importantly, you get a link, there's a link to Dwayne's book on the SE 300 exam prep. Um, you know, really uh, urge you to, to buy that book um, and, and follow that along as you're following this series. Definitely worth it. Um, obviously, Dwayne, Dwayne wrote it, published, and, and I was I was a technical reviewer. Kept him honest, as he likes to say. Yes. Um, <laughs> you're honest enough, mate. I honestly, I, I, I didn't do much. Uh, so, yeah, oh, we're going to be the last episode coming up. Um, so it's it's been it's you know we just it's got to say uh, from me personally thank you to everyone for your support thank you to people for the feedback thank you for people who've been sharing our, our you know the the videos and and liking them and comment them, commenting them um, so yeah Dwayne what I'll do is Dwayne I'll, I'll let you say some of the last episode I'll let you finish off and say your piece in the last episode <laughs> all right that sounds uh, good so thank you everybody for watching um, but up until next time thank you and goodbye thanks everybody.